ladies and gentlemen, we are live from the Isle of Man in the UK. This is John and Mike's MMA Corner. See, Fight Night 100 has a man making his debut for the UFC. Now, I've had John on the podcast before a few times. Darren Stewart, you... This is this is a bit crazy, man. Like I was just chilling out, and then all of a sudden I heard this rumor that you're going to UFC, and I thought, man, I wouldn't be surprised. But I didn't know. I thought maybe London card, and I heard there was a London card getting done in uh, end of February, March time. I thought maybe it's maybe it's rumors for then, and all of a sudden you're announced for this, man. And you know, that's just crazy. What a whirlwind, Darren. What the? How are you feeling about it all? I'm feeling good, man. I'm, it was hard to take in. I was shivering. I felt like crying and stuff like that. I started to cry like a, like a muppet, but it said I worked so hard to get there, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, and it took yeah. me like two years as a pro to get there. Well, that's the thing. It, it kind of shows your track record has been proven by getting taken up so quickly. You know, they believe, they see the potential it's in you. Uh, your, your opponent himself, uh, Baris, uh, Baruso, Baruso, whatever you want to pronounce him, my Brazilian's not, my Portuguese not the strongest, uh, Frank Amar Baruso, uh, he, he is a guy who I think is an ideal opponent for you to take on. He's got a, he's got a couple of wins in the UFC himself, so he's a guy that, you know, he's not, considered uh, an easy debut it's someone who will test you of course it's a big test because you're going to go across all the way down to brazil my friend do you think that's one of the bigger things you've got to take into consideration um yeah yeah but, but as my coach said like obviously we're going into the lines then but it's nothing worth not coming across you know what i mean kind yeah. of thing like the most of the people just boo me but i fought abroad before like when i was in taekwondo i've been to italy I fought in the World Cup for Taekwondo. I fought in Croatia, so me going abroad is not a problem. So I mean, so yeah, because I, I just worry about the time differences and getting your body used to. Because obviously, uh, Stevie Ray went down to Brazil, and I wasn't sure if that maybe could play a, a factor in all of this. Uh, so, do you think a big factor as well with you getting signed up to the UFC, not only winning the fights in Cage Warriors, but uh, and you know, do you think training with Jimmy Manoa kind of helped that establish that because they kind of saw that you two maybe were training together, they said, look, if he's training with Jimmy, he's definitely got the UFC caliber kind of people around him. Do you think that maybe would play the factor as well? Yeah, I think it kind of helped as well. I ain't trained for Jimmy for quite a long time. Oh, he's right. been injured for about, I think he's been for about, maybe about a year he was off for. Mm. And um, when he just started getting back into things, I think he was going across to like, um, uh, Alex's gym. Yes. So he's been a bit crazy, so... I'm trying to train with him soon as well, but he's still, his foot's a bit injured, he said, from the last fight I just had. Yeah. So I'm trying to get back slowly to train with him. But yeah, yeah, it's helped me a lot because I haven't had, I haven't got many training partners that's uh, my size or bigger than me kind of thing. That's mm. And that's really good. Mm. And obviously, Jimmy's big and he's really good. Yeah. So that helped me a lot as well. Um, have you then thought about maybe cross-training, going off to other gyms outside of London, maybe, to try and find some people? Uh, you know, even if it's like kind of big middleweights and light heavyweights or elsewhere. Yeah, it's just time though, man. Yeah, of time, course, man. yeah, yeah. Because I, I, I know uh, Jack um, Marshman. Yeah. Well, Jack Marshman got signed up. The pair of you got signed up, which was like, wow. You know, the pair of you getting signed up together. I was like, what? This is insane. At the same, like, you know, around the same time. And he's, he's obviously fighting, making his debut at the same time. I thought maybe the pair of you could kind of interlink. Due, due to the fact that, you know, the two years could be peaking up at the same time and Jack's a top bloke as well. Yeah, I want to try, but it's just crazy. If I was training full-time, this would be so easy. Mm, I can yeah. go away for a couple of days, whatever, do you know what I mean? But I've still got to work and put yeah. food on the table, do you know what I mean? And then yeah. train after that. Get home at 10 o'clock and then try and see my son before he goes to sleep, do you know what I mean? Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, again... Uh, and then when I'm training full-time, it'll be easy. Mm. All easy. So... With the, with the balance that you've got then, are you trying to calculate your holidays, so to speak? Because with work, you get allocated holidays. Are you trying to balance the holidays with training and having family time? Is it something you, you've you now got to take into consideration a lot more, focus and try and break everything up? Yeah, yeah, I've got to take into consideration because obviously I'm not training full time. So I've got to try and... Now I'm training every day for this fight. I'm training every day, so I'm trying to balance that training every day and work it, it's a killer, man. It's a proper killer. So, but like I said, if I train full time, the balance would be easy. I could train in the morning, mm. come home, 
spend time with my son, sleep, whatever, and go train in the evening. Do you know what I mean? I could do yeah. that every day, but doing nine to five and then going training, it's hard to balance. It's hard to balance. But I've got for it. I mean, I've been doing it for so long. I've been doing MMA now for about six years. I've been doing this this unbalance, whatever you want to call it, for six years. Mm. So it's not new to me. It's something I've always been doing, but that's what I can't wait for it to change, you know? Now, one thing I've been thinking about is you go down to Brazil, you get the victory. Do we see a little bit of a sh- bit of the snake hit movement going on, a bit of salsa, a bit of salsa for the folks at home? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You might see some of that. Some of the fight, you know what I mean? But if my head's in the right place, I'll do all that. But sometimes, like when I'm winning, I just lose the plot, man. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, hey, so, I agree. The, the that adrenaline rush, you just don't know what yeah. you're doing. You know, your body just reacts in some far out way, man. It's it's. Yeah, it, it is surreal. You can't really, especially when people get put on the microphone, they get put on the spot and they get asked these questions. I think, man, the, the, the emotions that are going through everyone's mind at that time, it's really hard to have a, you know, have a sensible answer or try to think about yeah. what you're saying, man. So, yeah, I just thought maybe you thought in your head, you know, you, you envision the fight, you envision going to different places and find it difficult uh, and then finding it easy. You know, you envision every kind of aspect of it. Obviously, the celebration's a big part, man. You know, Brazil, get those hips down, yeah. you know, they might, you know, it's carnival time, woo! <laughs> yeah, I've got, I've got to do all that, man. I've got to try and be myself as I am outside the cage, you know what I mean? I've got to yeah. try and bring it in there. Because I'm so comfortable outside the cage, but in there is different, so I've got to try and bring that in there, you know? One thing with this fight that I don't know about yourself, but I think a big factor in this fight will be your speed. You know, when I, when I look at the, what the both of you offer on, on a skill set side of things, I think that for me, when I look at the two parties, Speed is one thing that's going to be separating the two of you, big time. Uh, looking at your, your opponent yourself, what do you take from it as well? What what have you kind of, without giving away too much, maybe in the sense of what you kind of see as a whole and as weakness, maybe. But is there anything in particular you kind of think this will be the biggest difference? No. <laughs> yeah. Everything, just everything. I'm better everywhere. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've been I've been training for that, training everywhere. Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. I've been through it all. Yeah. Uh, he hasn't been tested, do you know what I mean? He's come out of fights looking all pretty and stuff. He hasn't been tested at all. Mm-hmm. You got times where I'm not dis I'm not disrespecting him, obviously he's in the UFC, do you know what mm-hmm. I mean? But yeah. there's times where people come against the cage and they're trying to force a take down, they're not doing nothing, they're not work head in the face, they're not doing none of that. He's just getting his breath back. Yeah. And once he gets his breath, he spins you off and puts you on the cage. And there's time on the floor as well when people got him on the floor they're not doing nothing mm. and he, like again he's getting his breath back do you know what i mean so he hasn't been tested and he still gasses yeah and he's not being tested so i think that when he has when he's gonna be tested he's gonna gas even more yeah i was gonna you know say the, I mean? so, the hardest thing you saw was the 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 uh, cry love fight where he was that was the only time i really saw him being pushed to any limit and you saw what happened the second round came and he just couldn't carry on in a sense of he, he got he got choked out, and he's a Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt, and he got choked out by Krylov. Now, all credit to Krylov, the dude has got submission wins left, right, and center under his belt. So, in, in, in MMA, you know, the, the black belt only goes so far because there's striking involved, so it's a different kettle of fish too. Um, do you see, did you watch that maybe and think to yourself, I can take advantage in this sense, or on, I can take advantage of his jiu-jitsu by just overwhelming him with my skill set my power my speed and just overwhelming conditioning because obviously we saw in there we saw you fighting uh on cage warriors where you went three hard rounds man so is that something that you kind of took a lot from as well yeah um i did watch that fight the last one but that's not the fight i was really focusing on the fight i was focused on is on um hand stringer you, it's not you if stringer, you know, yeah, yeah, hand stringer, hand yeah, stringer fight, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. The one, yeah, the one fight in these five fights where I believe he got tested because the guy does a lot of things that I do. Yeah, now, the guy was not as good as me, but he does a lot of things that I do. So if you got <laughs> the guy against the cage, stringer was elbowing him. Yeah, and on the floor, stringer was elbowing him and throwing shots, and that's the only time he'd been tested. He even got cut in that one as well. So that's the one I was looking at, really. I started thinking, like, yeah, this guy's a bit like me. So mm. I knew he can't handle that. And then he started trying to force a take that and stuff like that. So I knew he couldn't handle that. Um, the last fight he had, though, yeah, was good, though. It was good, it was good. The guy did push him. But mm. that one fight, Stringer, is the one I always watch. Yeah. It's, it's pushed the like it, man. And I think somebody as well, I've watched the UFC cards in Brazil, and the atmosphere 
it is something to kind of take note of. Is that something that you're looking forward to anyway? Even though the crowd will be booing, the atmosphere will be absolutely phenomenal, as they always are in Brazil. Even though you're you're, you're the away boy, you know, it, it, is that kind of... Because I thought you'd be on a Belfast card, if I'm honest. When I saw your name called up and you were going to fight, I thought, okay. And then I heard December night and I went, oh, Brazil, oh, Belfast, happy days. Belfast, I'll be going over there. I'll be chatting with Darren, having to catch up. And then you went down to Brazil and I thought, I'm not going down to Brazil. As much as I like you, Darren, I ain't going down Brazil, son. My skin don't do that, son. <laughs> <laughs> so did you not, Did you? were you expecting to go on that card? Because I, you know, I thought you might have gone on the Belfast card. Was that just not an option at all? Was it just Belf, uh, Brazil, that was it? Yeah, yeah, I didn't know about the Belfast one. Mm. I didn't know about Brazil. Like I said, like, to be fair, I know I do MMA, but I don't really keep up with the UFC. That's the honest truth, man. There's no time to keep up. Yeah. People say, yeah, watch this fight, watch that fight. You know when the next show's going to be, I don't. I don't keep up with it. So when he said mm. Brazil, I just said, okay. Yeah. You know it was a Belfast. But then when I heard there was a Belfast one, I was like, oh, okay, you sent me across the other side of the world, <laughs> you know what I mean? But uh, it is what it is. Like, yeah, I was so, going to say, yeah. You, you've got I, a missus, I, 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 you've got a little boy, I, you're tied I, up, man. It's it's understandable not knowing all the fights that are on. I, for example, my girlfriend is called UFC Fight Pass. I have no life. That is my, that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's my spooning partner, man. That's, that's what I go to bed with at night. <laughs> That's fine, it's fine. Everyone just get the violins out for me. It's all good. But yeah, man, look, it's it's insane. It's a whirlwind, right? Two years has been a whirlwind. But the thing is, obviously, you were earning your stripes in the amateur scene. And that's one thing I think people need to take into note is that you earned your stripes and you got yourself ready and you stepped in the pro ranks and you did fantastic in the amateur and then the pro. You've taken every measurement. You've went externally to kind of get a trainer partners in. I think that this is a great time for you to showcase what you're about because I've seen your fights, so I know what's going on anyway. But are you looking forward to factly the the fact that you'll be out of the UK kind of takes the pressure off as well. There isn't that home crowd, the kind of everyone expecting like, oh right, he's at home, he's going to win. There's no pre. Do you feel there's a bit of pressure off you then because you're away from home and there's like sort of speaking less distractions? No, nah, man. I think there's same amount of pressure, man. Especially because I'm in UFC now, so everyone knows I'm in UFC now. So it's like, yeah, Darren has to win. Darren's got to win. Do you know what I mean? It's the same as home, but a bit bigger now. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I don't feel no pressure off me. I think it's the same, probably even more. You know, people that I'd even like talked to before are just talking to me and they want me to win. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So my family that don't even watch UFC know about UFC and I want me to win. So it's a bit was, more pressure than normal. I was going to say, I, I'm not expecting you're going to have a lot of people coming over to watch your fight. No, only my team. <laughs> Just your team, yeah, yeah. I was going to say, yeah, because uh, Brazil's a packet and a half to get over to. Um, so with that as well then, you know, because you, you'll be going over, are you going to go over a little bit earlier to kind of get used to the, the time zones and, and the and the temperature? Because obviously the humidity is going to be different, way different than right now. We're in. We're basically going to be in, the, well, when your fight comes up, it's going to be in November. It ain't the warmest time of the year in the UK. Are you going to be going over a little bit earlier just to get yourself acclimatised to, to the conditions in Brazil? Yeah, I have to get there on a Monday and then I'll fight on a Saturday, so I have to be there for a whole week. Yeah. So, and my coach was saying something about, I don't, I don't know about the time difference, but he said that the time that I'll probably be fighting over there is the time I train over here, so it should be okay. Okay, okay, cool. So you're kind of already getting your body to get primed for that specific time of day anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, also, I gotta get used to the heat. I'm hearing that you know it's winter time over there, and it's still thirty plus. It's a winter time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's crazy, man. Yeah. The copper box that I fought in London, that was that was proper, proper hot, man. It was disgusting, man. Yeah. And I wasn't my last fight. Everyone was like, "Yeah, but you won the last fight, and you and you knocked him out." I said, "But I wasn't happy, man, because my cardio was crap in that fight, and my Just... cardio was one of the best." But but apparently, it's because of the the heat from yeah. the lights and this venue and stuff like that but i don't take that shit in do you know what i mean yeah you don't think, yeah. yeah as well you know what i'm saying but someone's saying well now at least this time you're gonna have light 60 feet above your head so it's not gonna be a right above your face kind of thing yeah and you've got a bigger cage road and bigger than normal than we fighting in london yeah so you got more space to move and i was like okay well let's see how it goes yeah so it might still be hot but it won't be like lights above my head hot yeah do you know what i mean because it's it disgusting man oh no I, cage I i was fighting in when I fought in 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 Wales in Merthyr, it was 
uh, July, the end of, like, around the mid-July, and I think it was, like, 21st of July, stupid, like, you know, 30, you know, 20 to 30 degrees, 25 to 30 degrees Celsius, and I was in there, I was in the change room getting ready, and just starting to, like, take, like, wrap my hand up, and I'm just sweating, just sitting down, wrapping, sweat dripping off your face, and I kind of went, oh, I'm not looking forward to this, and that was, and by the time it came to my fight, I'd, I hardly had to warm up. I was so hot, dripping sweat, walking to the cage. I couldn't believe it. I was in the cage by the end of the first round. I was just there going, I just want oxygen. <laughs> All the doors were open. There was no wind. And it makes, do you know what? In your head, you just can't get your head. It's crazy, like, how much that factor plays into it. Like you say, the lights, the lights are for the, for, obviously for the television, but they don't understand the difference it makes to the fighters because, dang, those lights are horrid, man. They, they just take it out of you. It's... I don't, I don't notice it though until people tell me. Obviously, I'm yeah. in that fire match, so I don't notice it. So I've, I've walked out, breathing all right, I'm normal. And then from the get go, I was just tired. Like, why am I so tired? Like, do you yeah. know what I mean? Like, I don't cut much weight anyway, so mm. I don't know why I'm tired. I ate a reasonable time and everything, you know what I mean? So mm. I've ate in the right time, so I don't see why I'm, t I'm not weak because I'm not eating. So I don't know why it was. And then someone said to me, it's really hot in there. And all my people that are watching on the outside of the ring, they were sweating as well. My fans were sweating as well. Wow. So I was like, really? But I wasn't, I wasn't listening to that. I was like, nah, 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 I'm shit. Like, my yeah. jaws is crap. They're like, no, it's not. It's not because of that, the lights and the heat in there. I said, okay, fair enough. I've got to take that in. But I still wasn't happy with it. And everyone's like, yeah, but you still finished him. I said, no, nah, I'm not happy, man. Hey, look, the thing is, though, you can go, you can go away from that and say, look, I, in awful conditions, my conditioning did get me through the fight because imagine if you had yeah, poor, if you had right. poor conditioning, and you were in that situation, you probably wouldn't have got through like you did. So it actually showed okay. that your conditioning was, you know, effective. And that's something you can take into this next bout. Where I think your pace that you could that you could put on to in this bout can really, it wouldn't go three rounds if you kept your pace up. Mm. You know, yeah, I think, I've been told yeah. up to use use that movement, but. The thing is, it's like I haven't. Obviously, I get, the thing of me, I get too picky, I get too nervous and stuff because I haven't really shown my movement in my last three fights. You know what I mean, all my amateurs and my couple pros, I've shown movement, movement, movement. Yeah. But then I haven't really shown movement in my last three fights. But then some people are telling me, well, you know, the level's getting hard, and that's what it is. But don't that you ain't lost. Don't that as if you are lost it. You haven't lost it. You just haven't been able to show it because the level got higher, mm -hmm. got harder. I was like, okay, fair enough. Because one French guy, I, I rushed that fight. I don't know why I rushed that fight. I mean, he gave me a hard time. I couldn't show the movement. I had to keep to the floor. And then I faced James Harrell. And I just took him down straight away. He said, yeah. showing my movement. And then the last fight, this guy, he just put it. He's a striker. Um, Balde is a striker, but then he just rushed into me. So I couldn't mm -hmm. show my movement again. I'm getting a bit frustrated thinking, okay, you know, UFC's coming. I'm going to show my movement. Mm -hmm. But my coach is saying, you will do it. You will do it. It's a bigger all, cage. Yeah, so, bigger yeah. cage. And it's also all dependent on the opponent. Like you said, the couple of fights that you had, if, like, James Hurl, he's like, what, I think he's like six foot five or something. That dude is primed <laughs> for a double leg takedown. That is double leg city all day, man. So I would be on the same boat as you. So I'd be straight down to take, man. Your last opponent, like you say, he just charged out here for the clinch on the cage work. Well, if that's the case, that's the case. You know, there's... There's certain circumstances you've just got to take into consideration. Like, for example, uh, if Barisa was six foot five again, you'd be shooting straight in for those takedowns, man. Forget movement, just get in, get it down. And that's what you've got to take your opponent each time. You have it. You will have the right opponent come to you where he will not allow you, but his skill set will complement your your movement to allow you to throw your movement, man. It's just patience. It's just waiting for that, that movement uh, and that moment to come around. Like you say, bigger cage this fight could be primed for it he could be trying to i think most likely he's going to try and close it down and get the like he swings he sw yeah he swings like a slugger not a technical striker he kind of yeah, I'll catch him. yeah, yeah, it, yeah. Big hit. i'll catch them my body just does it anyway but yeah I'll, I'll catch them man like these kicks he just throws i'll catch them yeah. he, throw, he don't he don't throw jabs or straight backs to knock you out he does it to go for a takedown so yeah 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 he might me, but he's gonna have a hard time taking me down, like. And the way he goes, like that. One of my friends said to me, like, it's actually scary how kind of poor he is, and he's in the UFC because them sloppy ones, they could throw something good and it could knock you out. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to try and go in there thinking that like, he's better than that. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, 
No, he he. Yeah. The thing is, those those they are they they're not clean strikes. But what he's doing is he's brawling. Brawling can catch someone and finish them because it's just so wild. It it puts you off because if you train to fight guys, when you're sparring with guys who are clinical strikers, your brain is set to compete against guys with good striking. When someone throws an offset punch, which is a bit wild and, and left field, your brain can't ha- figure it out in time because you don't spar with guys like that. It'd be like sparring with 10 guys who are brand new to the sport and swinging. You just, you know, because they're the worst ones to spar with because you don't know what they're going to throw because they don't throw things right and they're a bit quirky and it's a bit weird. And that's what he is. He throws these kind of shots that you wouldn't normally get from a, a, a good striker. So it catches people out. He's basically, like you say, he's trying to entice you and in, entice you into a brawl so he can get that takedown and clinch and, you know, sweep, sweep your foot and get you down kind of thing. That's what he wants to do. That's, that's just his game plan. And that's fine. That's his way. He likes it. And that's what he does. The thing is, you just got to accept that I ain't going to bite into your game. I'm going to play my game. Let him brawl, step back and pop in and pop off and pop off. And that's it. That's a beautiful way to do it, man. That's how I envision a fight anyway. I see him trying to get infuriated because he can't close you down. I see him trying to brawl to entice you in. I see you catching him with a couple to, and then just, just wilt him, just wilt him away and just chip away, chip away. E- even if you might even probably catch him to drop him, just stand him, make him stand back up. That's one thing that infuriates me. A lot of guys, they, they jump straight down. I'm like, dude, like Dan, Dan Henderson, Man, all he had to do in that first round with Bisping was go, get back up, bitch. I'm going to come on at you. And then it would have, you know, could have been a whole different fight. But that's what a lot, you know, you get that kind of, um, I call it touchline fever. You know, you get the guy down, you think you've got him. That's the thing for you, man, as well. You crack him, you drop him, stand back up, just step, step away, make him stand up. If you can't get up, fight yours. Oh, yeah. I've been told to do that as well, do you know what I mean? Mm. So let him get up. And if I am down there... Couple shots and then get back up. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Don't, don't don't let him like get the get the underhook in or let him get close guard or let him get anything on you just to hold you down. Just pop pop and get away, man. It's a yeah, big... yeah, I've been trying to train that still. So yeah, yeah, it is. It's, it's one of them cool. moment it's things, isn't it? Yeah. You, your brain just goes, "Ooh, I'm gonna get him! I'm gonna get him!" And you shoot him, man. But look, Darren, I have a lot of faith in you. I've been obviously following your career. I think I've been, I think we, I think we chatted on your debut at Cage Warriors, if I recall, man. Mm-hmm. That's how far, like, yeah. look, I've been following yeah. you since then. Bloody hell. Look, I believe, yeah. that's crazy to think about it, man. Darren, honestly, I, it's, it warms my heart when I see things like this. I, I, uh, you, you getting signed up, Jack Marshman, I spoke to Jack as well. Honestly, things like this make me so happy and I'm over the moon for you, man. I, I can't wait to see your debut. I'm going to the UFC Belfast card and um, I'm I, my private jet doesn't have enough fuel to get to Brazil in time. Sadly, these things happen. But what what I will be doing is I'm taking the laptop. Me and the boys will be tuning in with my fight pass to watch the card anyway. So we'll be watching the fights live um, afterwards. Man, enjoy the rest of your fight camp. Enjoy your family time and have a great week in Brazil, man. And, and just absorbing that whole atmosphere and that, and obviously you know it's just gonna be it's gonna be awesome. Yeah, I think I'll be alright when I get out of there. Obviously, I'm a bit funny now, but I think, yeah, I love a camera, do you know what I mean? I'll, I'll be alright, you know what I mean? Even I'm walking out. I've, I've been told that like, Jimmy said to me, you have to enjoy it, innit? He said yeah. to me, just enjoy it. Yes. Like, if I enjoy it, then, you know. It's just I'll another day. Right. It's just a different cage in a different place. Still the same sport, still the same yeah, game. Yeah, yeah. That's the only thing yeah. that's different, you know? Yeah. You, you yeah, might get. Going, you might get um, you might get a, I don't know, Big John McCarthy or, or Mark Goddard or Leon Roberts down in Brazil. You know, it might be a referee you've had before, sorry, in, in like Mark Goddard or someone. So it's like a familiar face. You'd be like, oh, right, okay, it's nothing different. That's all it is, bro. You just got to look at it that, man. And just do what you're doing. There's no, it's, look, there's no need to fix what ain't broken. So if you just keep doing what you're doing, we know what's going to happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, been, I've been through it all, man. I've had... Small people, tall people, big people, quick fights, long fights, brawling, clean fights. I had it all. I don't think he's had any of that. And the thing is, that's what yeah. gives you that knowledge already so early in your pro career to give you that kind of experience as well. You know, that kind of old head on young shoulders going into the sport, so to speak. So when you get in there, if you get into certain circumstances where it might be, you know, you have to dig a bit deep, you dug deep before, you know how to dig out. So you'll be okay with it. So you won't fluster. You won't panic. You go. I've done this. 
it's shit, but we'll power on through, and afterwards, I get to kick ass, and you'll be fine. Mm, yeah, 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 so, see how it goes, man. I just got to be me, man. I can't keep thinking of UFC, UFC, I just got to do no, what I want to do. No, it's not, no, that's it, man, you're right. It's just another cage, another venue, and that's all it is. Just to have a fun time, smile and enjoy yourself, Darren. Look, Darren, I'll let you go because I know you're busy. I know you've got stuff on, mate. I'm going to let you get back to the missus and have some family time and that. Uh, look, before you shoot off, what's your social media so everyone can jump on? Even though I pump it all the time anyway. But what, what is it, man, so everyone can jump onto it? Yeah, so Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat is all the same. So it's Darren underscore MMA. And also on... Um, Instagram as well, right in the dentist. Uh, oh man, what was it again? I forgot it now. Yeah, T yeah, just type in TDP in yeah, the dentist. No, one, what was it? Yeah, partnership. Yeah, yeah, my bad, my bad. Because up and coming thing, my team that helps me out. Okay. So on Instagram, type TDP, the dentist partnership. Okay. Up okay. and coming thing. Excuse me for forgetting it, so I missed that to help me out. Uh, <laughs> I will I will put a link in the bottom of the screen, people, for you to yeah. click on to this stuff anyway. Uh, uh, Darren, uh, obviously, you've got Re Reebok. Don't forget, mate. Get all the Reebok kit you can. See if they do little kids' shoes for your little man. Kit him out, man. You know, get him in a Reebok UFC. Yeah. See if they do, like, a little baby UFC daddy fighter kit. You know what I'm saying? That'd be awesome as well. How cool would that be? Yeah. Just, uh, just put it out yeah, there. That'd be awesome. And, uh, look... Um, Last but not least, give you give you gym a shout, your coaches and your training, your people that have helped you out as well. Yeah, shout out to my gym, the MMA clinic, my coaches, Paul Hines, Michael Russell, Chris Carley. Um, shout out my team, TDP, the dentist partnership. I've got it right that time. <laughs> um, shout, out my, shout out my friends and my family, my missus in the background there, just cooking as we're talking. She's hiding her face. Uh, shout out my son, he's sleeping. Um, yeah, shout out all the support, man, because without people like you, I wouldn't be here today, you know? So, yeah, good man, shout out the missus out. She is uh, obviously helping you out and getting to where you are with that belief she believes you. So thank you very much as well uh, from my side as well. Hey, look, have a great time, like I said. Have, hello, have a great time. Uh, yeah. Hey, here we go. <laughs> have, a, have a great time with the family, mate. And like I said, I'm so happy for you. I'm just, honestly, I can't wait to watch you compete again. And it's just, like I say, I know it's in the UFC. It's awesome. Another cage, another venue, another day, another bit, another win. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. There we go. 